Okay, hello again. We are going to attempt at this point with some 3 8 inch plate with a, let me turn this around, with a, a beveled edge on it. If I can get in the game here. Oh, hang on, I'm upside down with this. There we go. Here's the 3 8 inch plate, got a, a groove on it. We're going to do a, a butt weld. There's somewhat of a landing on this edge, this back edge right here. And so, what we're going to do is take a 332 7018 uh, rod with no flux on it. I've got my angle here that I used to fit stuff up with. I've got my plate laid across there. And we are going to do a horizontal simulated test uh, a coupon uh, for this type of plate for a stick rod weld. We're going to go ahead and put a 6010 root hot pass, then we'll go to a 7018. I'll use 1 8 on my 6010, then I'll step it up. Uh, when I go up to my 7018, I'll step down to the 332 rod size uh, since they run on the same comparable heat. I'll probably start out, I've got it on 85 right now, and we'll, uh, we'll see how that runs. So I've sandwiched my pieces together with my spacer between them, giving me the optimal gap that I'm looking for about a 332 and I'm just going to tack the front and the back then I'll go ahead and put my test piece up uh, about chest high which is where I'm comfortable welding on a test like this and we'll reposition the camera and whatnot and then we'll go from there but we're going to go ahead and first tack this uh, we'll tack one side here closest to the camera we'll pull our spacer out and uh, go from there. You're going to notice immediately that there is not a lot of uh, light around the arc, and that is because I'm using a stuff and drag method on my root. I'm welding this plate like a pipe welder would weld uh, a pipe test. I've got the arc just now the the handle is in front of the picture somehow and it, it goes away in a minute but uh, I have just completely stuffing the end of the rod into the bevel and I'm pushing in at a gradual strain. This is what I'm just using to, to put my piece on. Uh, I'll go ahead and take my overhead test specimen Probably just run it out here like so, or however you know you feel comfortable setting it up. But you want to make sure that there is nothing hindering your hands from going into the material as you weld, uh, and you want to get comfortable. So I'm going to lean on this leg of this A-frame here in my shop. I, I went to the point of using a two by four at times out on a job. I've gone out on the job by the by the test place or look for some piece of iron or something to brace myself just to get comfortable in the test booth. Uh, and it, sometimes it's very difficult to get comfortable in a test booth, but a welder wants to try and get as comfortable as he or she can because normally when you would take a test, there may be a little bit of nervousness or pressure on you you feel especially if you haven't worked in a while and you've got to pass a test to get on the job and you know seasoned welders don't usually have to endure those type of feelings uh, after you've been welding for a long time I personally still get that way if I have to take a test it's just something about a test uh, you're either make or break usually and uh, you know you're trying to feed your family and get ahead in life and so the, I'm gonna shut the camera off now and I just wanted to uh, show you what you know we're fixing to get into and then I'll set the camera up with the lens on it uh, from directly underneath as if you would be me 
welding overhead and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, here we are again uh, doing the overhead and I'm using this stuff and drag method. I'm just constantly pushing the rod into uh, the bevel. I'm constantly feeding the rod making sure that there's no spaces and gaps where the, the metal uh, would have a void in it and I'm just slowly moving along but I'm constantly pushing actually a little harder on overhead than you would uh, push on. I just kind of got the camera up over my head. I've got an above head light on. That one area to the right on the end of the coupon is where I tied into my uh, tack. I wouldn't be too concerned about that because they're going to cut that off. You never use that, that end of your coupon anyway. A little BB there, a little dark shadow there. Just like that one up above, a little BB I missed. But that looks pretty good. Hot fast. Here we go. Okay. Coming here with my, got my my stinger. You know, I have my gloves on. I've got one arm resting. I don't like to weld one-handed. I'm not very good at, at welding one-handed. I'm not steady. I'm not steady at two hands. So I need all the help I can get. So I'll come in here. Uh, I I get as comfortable as I can. I get my stinger, put my rod in it, and I'm, I'm just kind of leaning into this thing and I'm going to put my piece where it's going to be sticking out off the edge of this where I can just get right next to it and be real comfortable. Now if you get into a test booth you'll have to just find, I've used 2x4s found on a job before, just prop that up against things just so I can get comfortable because you don't, you don't want to fight the weld. You're already nervous about taking a test. Most people are. I know I always was. and. Uh, I still feel that anxiety, even here in my shop, you know, because I've got a camera rolling. I'm trying to produce a, a Class A weld for people that are, are, are wanting to learn, and, uh, you know, I'm instructing, so uh, there's pressure on me. And so when you go to take a test, normally there's some amount of pressure on you. So you just want to get in here, get comfortable. This is what I decided to do, and I can just go ahead and strike off, come down to my piece, and my piece will be fanned out this way. Of course, I'll have the lens on so we can see the, the puddle, but I'm just going to go ahead and work that in there. And then I can get around the back and I can show you the route that we put in. But first thing we want to do is fit it up, get our piece stacked into position, and then we'll go from there. Okay, we fire off on our plate and drop down into the keyhole. And if you'll notice uh, in the beginning stages of this, I'm not whipping the rod, I'm not stepping in and out of the puddle, I'm just uh, feeding in and just kind of like a drag, like a pipe welder would well. I stop right there because I missed a little bit. I come back. And that is, uh, that's kind of like how I like to weld. Uh, it gives you a more consistently smooth bead if you can do it that way. Later on in the test uh, piece, I have to whip it a little bit. For some reason, my keyhole opens up a little more, so I've got to step in and out of the puddle, which is fine. Uh, if you like to weld like that, I try and make it as easy as I can on myself 